Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Mystical. Today I am bringing you a quick fist weaving guide. If you enjoy videos like this, I can do one for Caster as well and Mythic Plus if you want to. But I'm just going to dive straight into talent, stats, everything. Try to make this as quick as possible for anyone that wants to learn fist weaver quickly. And with that said, I should bring it to the video. When should you fist weave? I am of the opinion that if you learn both casted and fist weaving, as a mist weaver, you're going to be in a pretty good spot. There are some people, of course, that only fist weave. There are some people, mostly me, that only ca only cast as a mist weaver, which is perfectly fine. Again, both are fine. If you learn how to play both, it's even better. If you want to fist weave, I would highly recommend queuing with you know any double melee team. If you're queuing normal arena, you know turbo, TSG, AUG, Feral, AUG, DK, anything like that. Very very good. In shuffle, if you're playing with a melee on your team and you see a warlock on the other team, run that warlock down to the dirt. Same with the shadow priest. Anything like that. If you have at least one melee on your team, I would fist weave. I would not fist weave with two casters because again, the range on your ancient teachings is 30 yards. So if you got a warlock that ports or long gates, or you have a mage that blinks, anything like that. You know, or if you have a boomy that's kiting away from you, like it's not going to reach them. Your healing is not going to reach them. So, again, fist weave when you want, of course. You know, you can do whatever you want. Personally, I would only fist weave if there was one melee on my team, ideally two. That way, they're always in range of my healing. First off, your stats are haste verse, no question about it. The faster your globals are, the more damage you do, which results in more healing. Fist weaving is a lot more different than the other healing specs that do damage. Your healing is only from damage nothing else there is no other way that you get healing out it is just damage so if you're not doing damage you're not healing so go haste verse best stat you can run for fist weaving next up we have talents on the left hand side we have the monk talent tree really nothing else to it i'll give you some suggestions for flex talents or anything that you want to change but for the most part 99 percent of games this is the build you're playing there are some flex talents though there is some are some talents that you're going to want to change there's yulon's grace that you can change for diffuse magic very good in shuffle and arena yulon's grace it gives you a shield based on your max health stack up to 15 percent, which is great but i do run diffuse magic into to affliction warlocks mostly to reverse the dots back to them or shadow priests similar reasons why if you need the extra dispel it's really really nice outside of that i find yulon's grace is a really good passive heal to have outside of yulon's grace you could technically drop for brew talent and go disable if you want that's perfectly fine it's up to you or if you're playing in something with poisons you could also uh, go into improved detox rogues survival hunters stuff like that really good to have improved detox outside of that those are the talents i really change there's really nothing else i do change i think everything else is pretty set in stone on the right hand side your build is based around ancient teachings in the monastery so very very good talent this is what makes your damage convert to healing you're going to go right down the left hand side you're going to pick up your teaching the monastery your feline stomp your ancient concordance and your awakened feline this right here is the bread and butter of the rotation i will talk about them more when we go over rotation fey lane stomp is your activator for ancient teachings because ancient teachings you need to you need to press essence font or fey lane stomp to activate the buff this is the buff that makes your damage convert to healing ancient concordance is what makes it so blackout kick strikes three targets and has a chance to reset your rising sun kick when you're in fey lane stomp which again is amazing and then awaken fey line fey line is what makes it so you have a more often you have more of a chance to reset your fey line stomp which is very very important for when you are moving around on the map on the right hand side here there is some differences that you can make so you could drop these points right here i prefer i like misty peaks into rising mist pretty solid talents you could also go shaloon's gift into shaohao's lessons into rising mist both are perfectly fine in fact you could even drop your life cycles and go to legendary legacy of wisdom for the reduced cast time that's perfectly fine too personally i don't really have man issues when a fist sweeping especially in shuffle the rounds are what three minutes long i have never even come close to running out of mana when fist weaving in a shuffle not even even in normal arena not even close so yeah you could go life cycles if you want or you can drop it which is perfectly fine too you could put it in legacy of wisdom you could put it in t of serenity you could even put it into a next patch you'll be able to put it into focus thunder but we're not going to do that yet so you put it into legacy of wisdom or t of serenity or into life cycles either one of those is fine perfectly fine whichever you want it this is my build with the flex talent here that you can put into t of serenity as far as PvP talents go, you have a few options that you can run. The first one is Alpha Tiger. If you're going to be swapping between targets, Alpha Tiger is a really good talent to have. This makes it so you get 20% haste every time you hit a new target and with a 30 second cooldown on the target. So if I go over to the dummy and I come over here and I Tiger Palm, boom, I get the 20% buff and then this guy gets a 30 second debuff. And But you can keep doing that over and over again. 
So when you queue into like a demo, and this is any target, by the way. So if you queue into a demo lock, this is why my demo lock friend hates Fist Weavers. You could hit an imp, you know, hunter pets, warlock pets, warlock imps, totems, any, any new target, and you tire palm it, you're going to get that 20% buff. I was just editing the video, and I forgot to mention, if you aren't going to swap targets with Alpha Tiger, and you're staying the one target, Fey Accord is a really, really good taunt as well. What this does, it reduces Feyline Stomp to 10 seconds instead of 20, which is really, really good. And then enemies struck by your Feyline Stomp are snared for 60%. So this is a really good, reliable slow if your team doesn't have a slow. So you see no debuffs or anything for me. If I Feyline Stomp, there should be a slow. I think one of them had it right here. So they're slowed by 60%. It is dispellable, but a lot of teams don't really dispel it. And it's really, really good because anytime you get a reset and you fade line stomp or you press it again, they're going to get slowed. These guys aren't getting slowed for some reason. But it's a really, really good talent if you're not planning on playing Alpha Tiger. This is a really common setup that I use when I'm fist weaving. So if you feel like you're going to just stick to one target or if you want a reliable slow, play Fey Accord. Obviously, if you're queuing into anything with magic damage, Peace Weaver with Restoral is just a must. This makes it so your team can recover easily if there's AoE damage, really good versus Rets, DKs, Warlocks, anything with magic damage. I mean, strip anything with even uh, one strong, the Hunt versus Demon Hunter, play Peace Weaver. And then this third one, I consider this like the flex talent. You could run pretty much anything here. I like Zen Sphere again for the damage, for the healing uh, and all that. But you could play Grapple Weapon if you're queuing into a Warrior. You can queue, you could play Eminence if you're not playing with like a Rep Pally or something and you need some ways to keep yourself alive. Eminence is great. And those are pretty much the two talents. You could kind of joke around with Mighty Ox Kick. This is what knocks people up in the air and knocks them like off Blade's Edge map. It's fine. Uh, it's a little bit troll, but it works. So if you want to play it and you want to be really annoying, play it. But yeah, Disarm and Eminence are the two, and then Zen Spheres. Those are the three I kind of rotate between this last slot, just depending on what I'm queuing into. Now that you have your stats and your talents, you now want to learn how to fist weave. So like I said before, the bread and butter of this rotation of ancient teachings, this is what makes it so when you Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, or Rising Sun Kick, you heal for the damage you do. And this is this buff is activated through Essence Font or through Feyline Stomp. And obviously, since you are running Manatee, if you do get a Manatee into an Essence Font, it reduces the mana cost on the Essence Font. So you don't you don't run, run out of mana as quickly, which is great. You can see I got to reset my Feyline Stomp there. Any ability from, any ability when you're standing in the Feyline Stomp, this blue right here, can reset the cooldown on it. So obviously, you know, Feyline Stomp, you get the buff, you get the Waken Feyline and the Ancient Concordance. You run out, they last for eight seconds, which is great. But if you find like, you know, you want to reset it, you can run back in, get the buff, and it refreshes it. But those buffs, I'll talk about it, very, very important. So Feyline Stomp really doesn't do much. It just activates your Ancient Teachings. Next is your Ancient Concordance. Again, this is what makes it so your Blackout Kick Strike, three additional targets. This is crucial for when you are stacked against an enemy team. If they are stacked up, if they have pets, if they are stacked together, anything like that. This is very, very important because your Blackout Kicks or reset your Rising Sun Kick. So if your Blackout Kicks hit more people, there's more of a chance your Rising Sun Kick resets very very important and then you have awaken feline so your abilities reset feline stomp 100 percent more often while you're in it your tiger palm strike twice and your spinning crane kick heals three nearby allies for 70 percent of damage done don't worry about spinning crane kick because it doesn't actually work with ancient teachings it only works with chiji which i'll talk about and then finally one other talent is teachings of the monastery so tiger palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time stacking up to three times blackout kick is a 15 percent chance to reset the main cooldown a rising sun kick so every time you get the buff right here, this Tiger Palm right here. Your Blackout Kick is going to strike two additional times, single target and cleave. So if I Blackout Kick right now, let me show my damage. Damage right now, damage done. So you only see Feyland stuff. If I Blackout Kick here, boom, I did 53K damage. It hit six. The reason it's hit six people is because they're stacked and I'm taking advantage of the teachings of the monastery and ancient concordance because your Blackout Strike strikes three targets. Keep that in mind. So I'm going to Tiger Palm again. I'm going to Blackout Kick. And again, it hits six times. And each time that hits, there's a chance it resets Rising Sun Kick. So if I Rising Sun Kick first, and then I Tiger Palm, and then I Blackout Kick, it reset my Rising Sun Kick. So it's very, very important to always Blackout Kick when people are stacked as often as you can. Use your Tiger Palms to get stacks. I'm teaching the monster. It actually stacks it three times. It's up to, I don't ever find it really useful to Tiger Palm twice to get to three stacks. Sometimes, maybe if there's downtime, sure, but I, I don't really 
find like that's necessary. Normally, I just go for one, especially if teams are stacked. Like you're just hitting so many people at once. There's it's there's a really good chance you're gonna get reset rising sun kick, and that's the basic rotation. You're gonna chi wave. You're gonna tiger palm. You're gonna Feyline stomp or essence font. Most of the time, you're gonna Feyline stomp, and then you're gonna rising sun kick off cooldown. Tiger palm, blackout kick. Get the reset rising sun kick, and you're just gonna do that tiger palm, blackout kick, rising sun kick, tiger palm, blackout kick, rising sun kick. My buff is going away. Let me Feyline stomp. If it's not, it's not. If it's not up, you can always go for a manatee into an essence font. That way, you get the mana reduction on it, and that's the basic of the rotation. Another important spell is Thunder Focus T, similar to casting Mistweaver. You're not going to be playing Focus Thunder like you do with casting Mistweaver, so you pretty much only have one charger. But it's still very important. So what Thunder Focus T does, and what you're going to be using it 99% of the time is Rising Sun Kick. So when you when you Thunder Focus T Rising Sun Kick, it reduces the cooldown. Of your next rising sun kick by nine seconds and this is important because rising sun kick is your biggest heal right it's your biggest damage so it's gonna be your biggest heal so it's it you just it's really easy to incorporate into the rotation you just you know if you need to you know recover or something like that you know you got your rising sun kick tiger you're gonna thunder focus t rising sun kick i use a tiger palm in the global and then i rising sun kick again and then i blackout kick boom for in like four globals, I got three rising sun kicks, which is crazy. So every 30 seconds, you're going to have two very quick rising sun kicks that are very, very important to use. The other situation that you could use it for that is used for is you could use it for an essence or an enveloping mist. So it makes it so Thunder Focus T enveloping mist is instant, right? If you have a teammate that's falling behind that maybe they you're playing with a warlock and they pour it out of range or if you have a mage that blinks out of range, you can always go for a quick Thunder Focus T and Velpy Mist, and then just continue doing damage. Where the rotation can get a little bit complex is with Chi-Gi. So what this does is you summon Chi-Gi, she lasts six seconds, and it makes it so your Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, and Spinning Crane Kick heal, and then reduces the mana cost and cast time of your Velpy Mist by 33%, stacking up to three. So essentially, if you get to three stacks, you get an instant free Velpy Mist. And then also removes like you, you can't be slowed or rooted during it. So that's really good. So I'll keep keep that in mind. If you use your tire palm, rising sun kick, or spinning crane kick, you get a stack, which or, or blackout kick, you get a stack of the teaching of the crane, I believe it's called. And it's very, very important to utilize Chiji as effective as possible. You're gonna use Chiji when you are obviously when your team is falling behind, you get the Chika Kun as well. So I'll show you what I do. Go for a blackout kick. Go for a tiger palm. You have two stacks right now of teaching the monastery. I chi G and I blackout kick. Instant enveloping, right? And then you rising sun kick, blackout kick, instant enveloping. Tiger palm, blackout kick, instant enveloping. Rising sun kick, and then you could go for like a little blackout kick, spinning crane kick if like teams are starting to like run away from you. But that's the rotation. And you could see, I don't know how many times I pressed it. If there's a way to see how many times I pressed enveloping mist, I cast it three times instantly they cost no mana they're instant and it's a really good way to recover when your team is falling behind because you're also going to take advantage of rising mist that makes it so you're ri renewing mist and velvet mist and essence font they they're every time you rising sun kick it extends their duration if that makes sense so if i use right if i use renewing mist here and i rising sun kick where, where my renewing mist go it spread and i rising sun kick well it should increase the duration of the renewing mist. If I put this on focus and I rising sun kick, you can see the duration went a little further because I rising sun kicked with rising mist. It's very, very important. And finally, a TLDR for the rotation for anyone. I tried to be as quick as possible, trying to make this video as short as possible. So here's the TLDR for anyone if you're just, you know, want to learn fist weaving basics. So again, put your port down at the start of the arena. I always start with putting Zen Sphere and then fist weave to activate your ancient teachings. Uh, that's your you know, Feyline Stomp, and then you're just going to Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, get the reset, Rising Sun Kick, throw a little Chi Wave in there every once in a while, reset your Zen Sphere if you have to. If your team is starting to die, Chi G, Thunder Focus T, Blackout Kick, Instant Enveloping, boom, Rising Sun Kick, go for a Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Instant Enveloping, miss. send it, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, refresh your buff with Feyline Stomp as well, and you just get the Instant Enveloping, miss, which is perfect. And you just keep and you just keep doing this over and over. After that, you're using your Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. You didn't get the reset, that's fine. Throw a little Chi Wave in there. Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, 
Rising Sun Kick. Oh, you're starting to fall behind. Restoro, Life Cocoon. If you need some damage, go for a Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Thunder Focus T, Rising Sun Kick into a Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Refresh your Zen Sphere. Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Refresh your Buff with Feyline Stop. And you just keep doing that over and over again. Consistently, just over and over. And the damage will overwhelm any healer. There isn't a single healer in this game. Maybe Holy Pally. Maybe. That can deal with the pressure of a melee with a Fist Weaver and a caster just CCing them and doing damage, there's just no chance. They're going to fall behind very quickly, and it's going to be quick, They're, especially in solo shuffle when dampening ramps up high. All damage matters in solo shuffle. If you can connect to a target and fist weave on them, they're not going to last very long. Now that you got your healing rotation down, let's just quickly talk about cooldowns. Again, fist weaving doesn't really have as many cooldowns just like normal Mist Weaver does. So you have Life Cocoon, you have your Chi-G, uh, you have your healing elixirs, which will heal yourself. You have your expel harm that'll heal you. But outside of that, you don't really have cooldowns for your teammates. Those are those are, and you have revival or restoral. So that's pretty much it. You want to rotate those as often as you can. If you're running into a team that has a lot of magic damage, a lot of magic CC, maybe restoral is good to recover when you leave crowd control to immune crowd control. Chigi, of course, is going to be your main cooldown. It's a one minute cooldown, and this is what what's going to help. I mean, I don't even know what number of dampening you could you could get to where chi isn't going to keep your team alive. I mean, as long as you're able to connect to a target and you have chi and you could just keep doing damage, you should be able to keep your team alive fairly deep into dampening. And then obviously you have life cocoon. I usually use that last just because you could, you know, you kind of, it's flexible. You need to use it on somebody. You can just press it. But yeah, those are the cooldowns that Miss Weaver has. It's again, it's not a lot. It's hard to rotate. One of the biggest learning curves for Miss Weaver in general is learning how to rotate your cooldowns. I would definitely rotate Restoral and Chi first if your teammates are dying. If you're dying, you have four Prue, Damp, and Harm. You also get the nice shield from Yulon's Grace, which is great. You also have Healing Elixirs and Expel Harm. So use those cooldowns on yourself. And if your teammates are dying, that's kind of when you use Life Cocoon and Chi And if there's any magic damage, use your Restoral. And before I end this video, let me go over some macros that you might want. So there are some macros that I would highly recommend. These are the Fist Sweepy macros. Blackout kick. So what this is going to do is this is going to make it so you hit your blackout kick the target of your the last target you targeted. So what this is going to do is when you're using Chi G right and you get your stacks of what Spirit of the Crane right or invoke Chi G and you rising sun kick somebody, I'm not going to target anybody. I'm going to blackout kick right now. I didn't target. I did not. I didn't use my mouse or anything. I'm just pressing the button and it's going to do damage. I have the same thing with rising sun kick. So I'm not going to target anything right now. And I'm going to Rising Sun Kick. And I have those macros for Blackout Kick, Tiger Palm, and Rising Sun Kick. So I'll put that in the description as well. Outside of that, there really isn't much for anything. Of course, you know, if, if you've seen any of my videos, Life Cocoon, that macro right here. This makes it so you don't accidentally Life Cocoon yourself when someone dies in RGs. Or this will make it so you don't accidentally Cocoon yourself when someone's mind controlled or anything like that. This is an absolute must-have macro. Please use this macro. It's very, very important. I have kick one, two, three, kick focus and all that, which is great to spell one and two for quick dispels. But that's pretty much it. I don't have much of anything else for, you know, macros. I, I think Miss Weaver doesn't have many. Oh, uh, party one, party two, party self, Tiger's Lust. Get used to it. Get comfortable playing Tiger's Lust. Get comfortable using it on yourself to get out of roots and slows. Very, very important. And I think that's pretty much it for macros. And that is pretty much it. Hopefully this video was quick. If you enjoyed this video, and you want to see a caster Miss Weaver version, please let me know. I kind of enjoy the quicker pace of these videos, and hopefully it's more enjoyable to watch as well. And yeah, that is pretty much it. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have, and that's it for me. Hope everyone has a fantastic day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.